So, Pete, you're at, tell us a little bit. First of all, we want to say where you're at right now. You're at resorts. Yes, in Atlantic City. We're having a wonderful time. The weather's nice. I mean, they only have two seasons here, uh, winter and July 7th. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I'm thrilled to be back here. I, I love Atlantic City. Well, well listen, you got, uh, I'm going to take you back, I guess, 19, is it 1970, when you were on the Carson Show for the first time? Oh, that was 1971. 1971. Yeah. How many times yeah. were you on that show, Pete? 25. 25 wow. times. I seen the clip with uh, Rickles. What's well, that? I've gone several times with Don because um, I, I opened for him for two years, and they're always part of my career. Yes, he's, he was saying and, that, yeah. And and I have to tell you that uh, the funniest Tonight Show experience I have is with a guy named Nipsey Russell. You remember that name? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I was on the first time with uh, John Forsythe and Natalie Wood. Wow. I was in awe of everybody, but I was so nervous. I, I just couldn't even sit in the green room. So I'm walking around behind the, the curtain, and I'm trying to keep my mouth uh, from turning into cotton and uh, trying to remember the first line of the first song I was going to do. <laughs> and Nipsey Russell sees me. He realized how nervous I am. He says, hey, young blood. He said, is this your first time? I said, yeah. He said, Okay. Now, I think he's going to tell me something that's really soothing and sympathetic. He goes, but look at it this way. If you bomb tonight, you'll never get the chance to bomb in front of this many people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nipsey. And he thanked you. Right, I'm sure you thanked him for that, Pete. <laughs> oh, yeah. He actually relaxed me. <laughs> now, Pete, another thing you did, which is very interesting. I think you were in the Wall Street Journal. I tried to do a little bit of homework. Um, you actually sold your own album on yeah. TV. I, uh... I, uh, I had a deal with uh, Epic Records in 1973, and uh, they released uh, one one record, didn't push it very well, and uh, and then they dropped me. And so well, once you're with a major label and then you get dropped, it's pretty tough to get somebody else to take a chance with. Uh -huh. So I had about two years where I, I just couldn't get anybody to uh, uh, sign me and then record me. So I decided, because of a thing called a Crazy Eddie commercial, which I don't know if you're familiar Yeah, I remember. Really, uh, familiar <laughs> Races with are insane. Uh, yes. Because I couldn't believe he was on TV. I said, uh, how could somebody with only two stores be on TV? It must be cheaper than I thought. Right. So I decided to, to go make an album and go on TV, go directly to the public, and see if uh, if I could have a career, let the public vote on it. Right. So... Uh, we we're very fortunate. We sold a million eight hundred thousand. I know, almost two million and, records. Uh, yeah, uh, and, you know, it just changed my life. Yes. But what's amazing about the whole thing is that uh, everybody in the record business gets bootlegged. You know, people steal your records, mm -hmm. reproduce them, and sell right. them elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still selling them in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever go down, you can go there. You're a big hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't collect anything, but now I like to be doing concerts there, but I. Uh, but I can't collect anything on the record. Right. I got you. Listen, I have another curious uh, question. Is Did you have some kind of affiliation with Chevy Chase? Did he know you? Well, you know, that's the funniest thing. At the time, Saturday Night Live did that uh, sketch on me. Right. Uh, everybody thought that I was friendly with him. And I had never met him. Oh. But then because I lived in Southampton and he visited Southampton, Long Island very often. Um, we finally met and uh, we became friendly. He, that's when he did Flex Liz and did me in the movie. Uh, you know, uh, when I, I never see, asked for it. He just, did it. he just got a kick out of me. I guess. Yeah, well, I seen it. Uh, we, we seen it. We got a clip was on uh, Fletch Lives. Mm-hmm. When he goes in and he says hi, uh, he's dressed up in uh, glasses and <laughs> some kind of red hair, and he says to the guy, "Hi, Peter Lemongello." <laughs> you, know, you know what's really funny about that? I didn't know it happened. I was with my kid to move to the movie, <laughs> and uh, and all of a sudden he said that. And my daughter said, "Daddy, he just said your name," <laughs> yes. and it happened so quickly. That I, I it seemed like I don't know, was I dozing or something? I missed it. Right. And I said, that can't be. So then later I, I, I was able to get the video and I saw Oh my God, he really did. Yeah, we got a lot of publicity out of it. I right? mean, you had a, you had so many different turns of your career. Now, anything with the Godfather? Yeah, you know what happened? I was uh, I I was slated to do uh, uh, Johnny Fontaine's role. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And uh, I, I don't know if, if I should say this, but anyway, uh, 
the team that I had helping me was uh, Joe Colombo's family, and he got shot, and uh, before you know it, we lost our records. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, oh. then they gave it to Al Martino. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. But now, later on, I meet Al, Al Martino, we get friendly, and we're having lunch one day, and he tells me that Sinatra called him and said, don't do it. And he said, oh. what do you mean, don't do it? He says, well, I don't, I don't want you doing that. And yeah, because that was... Uh, I you know, do you have something better for me? He said, this could really help my career. Mm -hmm. Sinatra said, no, I'm not producing anything right now. I said, but I don't want you to do it. So he did it, and then Sinatra banned him, and he had to go to England for 10 years. Yeah, I, I heard all about that. The same thing yeah. with Tony Bennett. Yeah, in fact, you know well, who told us... I'm glad that I lost the part. Yeah, you know who told us that story, too, uh, was uh, Charlie Gracie. Yeah, really? it's in his book. Yeah, but well, I mean to have you, to make it up to have your t <laughs> to have your type of career. But you still, uh, I, I know we have a we have a flyer to, for Florida. Yeah. Um, that's it. The, what's that room called? The Rendazzo. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm blowing this. <laughs> it's in my, no, yeah. it's called the Raz room. Raz room. Where the heck did I get Rendazzo? He Rand works here. The Raz room. It's funny because yeah. the name Randazzo, uh, I was affiliated with Steady Randazzo. Oh, okay. Going out of my head. And he produced my Love 76 album, the one that we sold on TV. Right. Wow. That's pretty. That's well, when you said Randazzo, I thought you were going for No, me. no, no, no. I seen that because we, we pulled, you know, whenever you're on here, we, you know, we, we try to plug as much as we can for you in our Facebooks and our Facebook clubs, and uh, you know we pull as much off the air, off the internet as we can. Sometimes it's good stuff, sometimes it's not. Well, it's really been, you know, I'm very gratified because people still come to the shows here at resort, holding up the albums that they bought back in the. Oh, 70s. let me tell you something. Can I can I give you this this little this will give you a little lift. We have affiliations with uh, so many different groups, and one of them is the Italian American group. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like twenty thousand members, wow. and it says Italians are us. The R is backwards, right. and you'd be surprised how many women asked where to buy your records. <laughs> yeah, okay. we, yeah, we want to. Can yeah. I give it a plug? No, I'm going to do it right now. It's plemonjello dot com. Am I right? My first initial and then my last name. Done. Right, P. Lemon Jello, and that's Jello with a G, not like we were trying to hunt it with a J. <laughs> Lemon Jello dot com, and you can get everything. You can see clips. You can see where to get the albums, and uh, uh, in fact, even our uh, our our biggest fan, which is my my cousin uh, Mindy, 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 uh, Mindy Cohen Bono. <laughs> she called me up, or no, she texted me, and she said, "Wait a minute." Can you play that song? And I said, yeah, I know what song you want. <laughs> and that's the one Paul Anka did for you. Yeah. Right. And what's do the name of that? You. Yeah, Do I Love You. Do I Love You. Yeah. And then Paul Anka ended up doing that song, too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. But, yeah. You know, the, the truth is that um, years later, I asked him uh, why he gave it to me. Right. Because uh, it's such a great song. And yes, I'm it is. grateful. But I said, Paul, why did you give that song to me instead of doing it yourself? I actually thought you could do it better than I could. I mean, that's how terrific this guy is. Yeah, and we're going to play it a little bit later. We do. You uh, uh, got the MP3, and uh, my kids showed me what to do with it. So we. <laughs> 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 but you're at resorts, and uh, when are you at resorts? Where are you at resorts? How well, can I'm here. Uh, actually, I only have I did 20 shows uh, Ooh, in God. April and May. I only have one more, and that's Sunday night, the uh, 31st at 8 p.m. All right. Did you hear that Sunday night? Yep. But we uh, we there. just had the greatest fun. I I've, I've never enjoyed, and everybody says this, but I've really never enjoyed a run an engagement like this one. This has really been fun. Wow, twenty shows though. That's, that's tough. Great. I remember uh, last big thing I did down the shore was this year, and we were honoring nineteen seventy three this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, on this show, uh, I did a show called Bandstand seventy three. It was in Wildwood. I was the front singer then, and uh, that was a big thing for me. Right. But, great? I, but I know what it was like to do two shows a night, seven days a week, man. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Thank God I only do one show a night. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I always tell them that's all I can do, babe. <laughs> so that's you had... to do two. People don't realize that. But you, know, you get yourself oh, up to no, the no, one, you yeah. put everything into it, yeah. and you have to do it again. Obviously. Exactly. And the, and the suit gets really in bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, like I said, the Tonight Show. You sold out Carnegie Hall. I did. Right. And I, uh, did you know that? Uh, nobody was more oh. surprised than I was. Yes. Saw that Carnegie Hall. Did you do Madison Square? Well, Spain? you know what it is. Um, you, uh, you, you get the deal to do it, and right. you're excited about it because Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center and right. you know, 
Madison Square Garden. You know, they were impressed with places. They right. dreamed about working when you were younger. And then you find out that it's sold out, and you really can't believe it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that would have been the most incredible thing for I you. had a guy call me from uh, Jesus Palace in uh, the office in Manhattan on, on uh, 7th Avenue, and he said, uh, call my office. And he said, uh, is there any way you can help me get two tickets to your show at Carnegie Hall? <laughs> And I said, of course. I have, you know, I have a couple that they gave me. Right. I said, so I can do that. So uh, I was in Manhattan when he called me. And I, so I just hopped in my limousine and went over there. And I met him. And he said, uh, I have a guy that's one of our biggest customers. You know what that means. Right. And he said, his daughter wants to see you. And I called every scalper in town. Nobody's got any tickets. He said, I really need this favor. So I just reached in my pocket and I gave him two tickets. He said, I don't know what to do to thank you. He said, here's four tickets to see Sinatra at the uh, Westchester from the city. That's wow. a good story. He's kidding me. I'm giving that's you two good. of mine, and you're going to give me four. <laughs> that's, a, that's all right. That's all right. That was the greatest feeling I ever had. Yeah, hey, listen, too. We also, uh, in fact, want to advertise him this night. We had your cousin here, Mike Marino. The best new comedian. I, oh, I know absolutely. everybody's expecting me to absolutely. say that. Did you know that? But yeah, he is just yeah. so good. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> Funny guy. He's the nicest guy in the world and the funniest. Yes, well, listen, is. Peter, I got to say this, too. Uh, next time you're by, you're going to give us a call? Absolutely. Okay. And listen, thank you so much for honoring our show. Uh, to have somebody of your magnitude was really uh, flattering for us. We're oh, really my happy pleasure. About that. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you someday. Oh, yeah, we will. We will. Next time you're up, when we got some time, like you said, you're rushed this week, this time, and uh, maybe we'll meet with Mike and we'll get something to eat. Yeah, because, yeah. But the way Mike looks like, it looks like he knows a lot of good places to eat. You know? That would be wonderful. Yeah, all Italians know where to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It's really been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, good night.